I, I'm okay. Okay, we come home. We we beat the Dallas Mavericks 106 to 100. It wasn't the prettiest thing in the fourth quarter. We get outscored 30 to 19. We've been used to seeing that as of late. That definitely has to be cleaned up. But the Sixers go out there and get a win. The storyline heading into this: Luca, who is supposed to be winning the Rookie of the Year this year, and he's no doubt having a phenomenal season, versus Ben Simmons, who was last year's. Rookie of the Year. So, that was the storyline heading into this one. And it was clear as day to me that Ben Simmons won this clearly. When you look at the Sixers and how they played today, I, I didn't think it was that bad. I know it got closer than it had to be once again. But I didn't think it was that bad. Especially defensively. We did a phenomenal job defensively. Seven steals. Five blocks. You hold Luka, who struggled all night long from the field, a 4 16 shooting and 1 for 8 from the 3. Now, that wasn't all because of just our stellar defense. Sometimes he just missed his shots, but we made it uncomfortable for him. Obviously, when you look at the Mavericks and you go into a game against the Mavericks, you say, Luka, he's their guy. He's the player that you need to look out for. So we game plan to stop him, and he clearly struggled tonight, which is great to see, but there were some moves early on where I saw him getting fouled. He was he was so smooth and his poise, especially against a guy like Landry Shamit. Luca was doing these footwork moves and getting Landry Shamit to jump and, and come off the floor and foul him. He just has that that it factor. He really does. He's going to be special, Luca. He's going to be special. But today he struggled and the Sixers got the best of him. So when you look at the players of the game for me, th there were four players that stood out for me for the, for the 76ers. Ben Simmons, J.J., Joel, the big three, and Jonah Bolden. Jonah Bolden looked smooth tonight. He's getting more comfortable. He's playing more minutes with the top dogs now, which I kind of like. He goes for 11 and grabbed nine boards. He was one rebound shy of a double-double. I thought he looked smooth out there. He's just he's getting more comfortable as he's getting time, and I like the length and athleticism that he can bring to the table with the, the top guns on the squad. So Joel, he had a double-double, uh, 25 and 12, and he tacked on five assists. He was diving on the ground late, loose balls. He's a big guy. He's getting down and dirty to get the ball, which kind of helped us seal the deal because it was getting close and it was getting kind of iffy late. We got the big man diving on the ground. That's beautiful. That's what you have to see. That's what you have to see. Ben Simmons, 20, 14, and 11. He's getting post-ups and he's dominating with who's defending him due to his size. He's just getting in better positions. I think that goes with Brett Brown, putting him in those positions to succeed more. We've seen him take a couple jumpers now. I'm loving the gameplay that we're getting out of Ben Simmons as of late. You look at the free throws. Two of six today. And late, the Mavericks decided to hack a Ben, and he went one for one. And I love what I'm seeing out of Ben. I, I really am loving it. And now he needs to keep... Working on the jump shots, keep taking them, whether they fall or not, keep taking the jump shots because we love it and it's in the right direction that we need you to be in. And we, we need to start now in the free throws because you see teams starting to hack the bend, hack the bend, hack the bend. And I just want to see some progress because it, it really is um, not going to work out if he's shooting lower than 60%. But we are in the right direction. Without a doubt, Ben knows it. Brett knows it. They talked about it and said, if you want to take the next step, you're going to have to start taking jumpers. Now we're seeing him consistently taking jumpers. And I know it's going to take time. So I just want to see improvement on the jump shots. Keep taking them. And, and let's keep working on the free throws because you're going to get fouled late, fouled late, fouled late on purpose by other teams and, and put on the free throw line. So got to... Got to start now on those more um, more consistently down the stretch. But I'm loving what I'm seeing out of Ben. Another triple-double. He's being a lot more aggressive offensively, and it's beautiful to see. J.J. had 20, and he was just doing his thing. The team only hit six three-pointers tonight. So we definitely did not have the best three-point shooting games. 23% um, from threes. Only had 10 turnovers. I want to talk about something that doesn't really relate to this game, but it, it kind of does. So no Wilson Chandler and no Jimmy Butler again. I didn't make a video about the Jimmy Butler situation because I personally believe it is just overblown completely. So Woj tweeted out that there was an altercation between Jimmy Butler and Brett Brown after a film session. And I, I just think because it's Jimmy Butler, they are blowing this out of proportion on a whole nother level. 
Jimmy wants to talk to Coach about maybe more pick and rolls, isolations, giving him a different look when he's out there on the floor to try and get himself going. I don't think it has to do with, oh, you're not playing me, and you, this isn't working. But that's how the media played this out to be. I don't think it's to that extreme. Brett Brown spoke, said, listen, I'm totally okay with what Jimmy Butler did. He came to me, we talked about it, and we discussed what we want to do moving forward. It's not weird to talk to your coach about what we should do or what our other options are to maybe implement a player into the game plan differently. It's not a big deal, and I hate the fact that the media is just crushing this and blowing it out of proportion. So that's why I didn't feel like making a video on it because I just feel like it's not as bad as everybody is saying it to be. It doesn't look good because it's Jimmy Butler, but I think that's why the storyline is that. I think you have a coach and a player discussing what we can do to implement a, that specific player into the game plan better. That's all it was. It was a discussion between the two on moving forward as a squad and how to implement Jimmy Butler in a different setting to maybe help his game out more. But no, no, it was a terrible altercation and they were, he was aggressively pissed. Come on, stop, stop. That's called clickbait. That's what they're working with. That's called clickbait. I think it was just a team figuring it out. Figuring out a different way. That's all. So you look at Luca. You look at Ben. And Ben won the night, without a doubt. Ben won the night. I really did love how, how Ben has been a factor scoring the basketball. And it goes with Brett Brown getting him looks in the post. And he's even working out of the post. So say he doesn't score, but he's he's passing out of it and he's using his vision to get other guys going. That's one thing Jonah Bolden even said is wow, is it a difference maker when you play with stars like Joel and you play with stars like Ben. They find you and they make it happen. It's so much easier to play with better players, and, and that makes sense. So you look at the bench, uh, 23 points to their 50-plus. We know that's coming. We're also down two guys, so it definitely factors in how the starting rotation is and how weak our bench is to the point where Shake Milton is getting legitimate minutes, not even garbage time minutes, and he... Did fairly well. Showed some athleticism. Went to the basket hard. Got an and one. Hit a three-pointer. Good for Shake Mill and getting some minutes. Furkan kind of struggled tonight. He he didn't really get much going at all. But at the end of the day, the, the Sixers win. They get another win at home. I think they are now 17-3 and three in the Wells Fargo on the season, which is clearly tremendous and speaks high value on the crowd, how the team plays. In in South Philly, and there's nothing wrong with that at all. So we come home for two games. We take care of business here. We play Washington on Tuesday, and they're our team that they're just struggling. That, that team is emotionally checked out, it seems, and maybe even physically with the whole John Wall thing. So we should be able to take care of business there. A couple days to relax here. What do you got tomorrow, Monday, and then back at it on Tuesday. So a couple days to relax, maybe get Wilson Chandler, maybe get Jimmy Butler a little bit healthier. It, it says upper respiratory. I, I mean, what? maybe just sick. Maybe they have a, some sort of sickness going on in, in the locker room, and that's why they didn't get to play tonight. But I know it wasn't the prettiest, prettiest thing in the world at the end, but I think the, the Sixers put together a – a solid game. It wasn't the best offensively, but I think their defense really stood out to me, forcing Luka to struggle from the floor and, and blocking shots, stealing the basketball. TJ getting gritty after we're making baskets. He's running around, stealing the ball. He played well when it came to his grittiness. And I think the team put together a great effort. I just, um, I keep looking at that fourth quarter in that back half of games, and you see outscored 30-19. to 19. You see us getting outscored and, and blowing leads, and it's a little concerning. We are squeaking it out and finding a way to win those games, but at some point we're going to have to really put the foot down, really step on the opponent's throat and make sure that they don't have a chance to come back into the basketball game. We need that to happen. And, and I'm sure it'll start going here, but it needs to happen rather sooner so we can really start solidifying ourselves as the real deal. We also need to add to this bench. They keep showing Zaheer Smith on the bench. We saw Markel on the away games. Those two bodies would be really helpful right now. And Wilson Chandler and Jimmy Butler. It would be very, very helpful. Sixers get a dub. 106-100.
the team keeps finding ways to win. Let me know what you think down below. Thank you so much for watching. I'll see you next time.